So you think you want a Doberman? Well, you're not alone. Over 15,000 Brits in the last 10 years have registered a Doberman puppy with the Kennel Club. And the Americans have their Doberman in their top 20 breeds nationwide consistently. They call it the Doberman Pincher over there, but don't get it confused. This is very much the same dog. Its popularity absolutely must have something to do with its magnificent looks, rippling with the muscle of a Rottweiler, but with the sleekness of a Greyhound or Weimarana. These dogs are absolutely stunning. But it goes beyond that, of course. These dogs are some of the most intelligent of all of the breeds, often considered to outrank even the brain box that is the Labrador Retriever in terms of smarts. They're also incredibly loyal and dedicated to the protection and happiness of their loving leader more than almost any other breed, which makes sense because that's what they were bred for a mere 150 years ago or so. Yes, they are new kids on the block when compared with the ancient Saluki that predates written history, for example, but they're not going anywhere. I mean, how many other breeds can compete with Tunga, the Indian police Doberman who uncovered 50 murders and as many thefts and who pursued a murderer eight miles to apprehend them for their crimes? Now, I know what you're thinking. Yes, Will, we all know that you love Dobermans. That's why you're planning to maybe own one in the future. But what about their suitability for you? And fair enough. A dog as work-driven, as intelligent, and as powerful as this, a dog who has had confrontation bred into it since its inception as a breed, is probably not the easiest dog for a novice owner. And yes, it's worth looking at the rougher side of things if we want to be prepared. A 2016 review of 10 studies and 15 years across multiple populations found that the Dobermans, alongside their national pal, the German Shepherd, were the breed most likely to be involved in bite incidents. And sadly, Dobermans are also in the top 10 breeds for causing fatalities. They are associated with stranger-directed aggression, though what guarding breed isn't in the right circumstances, and also dog-to-dog -dog aggression more strongly than your average dog breed, meaning that their loyalty to and gentleness with owner and family may not extend further than that small circle. In terms of dog-to-dog -dog aggression, it's well established that this is at its worst in on-lead interactions and involving intact males. And unsurprisingly, when it comes to stranger-directed aggression, this is most strongly linked with the guarding and protection instinct that makes the breed what it is. Taking all biases off the table, this is what we find in the data, and it means these aren't a dog for everyone. But where does this all come from? Why is it that a dog like the Nufi, with twice the weight behind it, can carry the reputation of a nanny dog and inspire Nana in Peter Pan, whilst the slimline Doberman carries the reputation of a devil dog guarding the gates of hell and ends up being cast as a pack-based killer in the 70s Bond film Moonraker? Well, as most things do in the world of domesticating dogs, it comes down to breed history. The Doberman has its origins in 19th century Germany, where a dog warden and tax collector of the same name, Doberman, decided to make his two jobs help each other out. Being a tax collector was an extremely dangerous and vulnerable job at the time, and so Doberman decided to breed the ultimate protection dog, taking various dogs in his possession and breeding them together for their best parts. He created the incredibly strong, fast, nose-driven, confrontational and confident Doberman. He was no breeder and so stud books are nowhere to be found, but we can presume that German Shepherd types, Pincher or Terrier types and muscle monsters like the Rotti and the Boceron went into the mix, with Greyhounds and Weimaraners later passing on the sleekness and hunting gifts to the resulting dog. This absolute supermutt was refined over the years after Doberman's death, and because of its talents, morphology, and more than anything, reputation, it was selectively bred for service and aggression for decades and centuries that followed. And that's why we have today an absolute workhorse of a dog who will only thrive in a world where he can be biologically fulfilled as a working dog, whatever that might look like to you. 
So then, what does that look like? Well, in my opinion, a dog like this is a huge responsibility and as such needs a lot of input from an owner. The happiest Dobermans I meet are typically those employed in working roles and those who compete in sports. There are exceptions, particularly in the showing lines and the odd more homebody dog, but in general, a dog whose brain outranks almost all other breeds with the kind of hardware that can have it running at full tilt for most of the day needs an outlet because a happy dog, you guessed it, is a tired one. Dobermans do great in obedience, agility, tracking and IGP and can be put to work at almost anything. So keen they are to please their owners and handlers. If you get into fly ball with your Doby, you might end up like Onyx, a Doberman who had the Onyx Award named after him for amassing 20,000 points in the sport at competitive levels. Whatever the case, if you want a happy, stable Doberman, then start socializing early and keep working until late. Job done.